Well, ladies and gentlemen, I never thought I would see the day, but here we are. Let it be known that nobody, and I mean nobody, beats the St. Louis Blues nine times in a row. The St. Louis Blues won against the San Jose Sharks, snapping their eight game regulation losing streak with a 5-3 win. The offense finally woke up after being non-existent throughout the entire losing streak. I'm going to talk about all the good that came from the win, a little bit of the bad, and then prepping for the big slate of games that we have coming up against the Vegas Golden Knights and Colorado Avalanche. Should be a fun episode. Make sure you stay tuned. On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Locked On Blues Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and your number one source for daily blues content. I kind of wish you just saw the camera there. Uh, because I tried to take a sip from my water bottle, and I guess it's a, a little loose. And now my shirt's all wet. So the Blues might have won, but I just took an L. Um, and that's why you got to watch on YouTube. You got to see funny, um, you know, quirky, haha moments like Josh pouring water all over himself. Anyways, I'm your host, Josh Hyman. As always, if you don't know me, welcome to the show. This is getting close. I think this is episode 498 of the Lockdown Blues podcast. So we are two away from 500. Uh, I got to do the math there. could be wrong. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for making Lockdown Blues your first listen. If you are tuning into the show for the first time, or if you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. Thanks for making me part of your daily routine. I've been looking forward to this episode for about 20 days because that is the last time the Blues won a hockey game prior to last night. Um, Eight-game regulation losing streak goes without saying. Going to be talking about the win and how they can use that momentum to hopefully not embarrass themselves in front of two extremely, extremely, extremely talented opponents in the Vegas Golden Knights and Colorado Avalanche. But before I get into any of that, I wanted to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts, and let's jump into it, shall we? So. The St. Louis Blues took on the San Jose Sharks last night, um, looking to snap their horrific eight-game regulation losing streak in St. Louis. Um, and things went off to a good start with Tory Crew getting his second goal of the season just two and a half minutes into the game off of a pretty nice move down low. Assist from Braden Shen and Justin Falk. Justin Falk continues his dominant season. I believe he is 10th in the NHL in terms of uh, points for a defenseman. So it was great to see him continue that trend. He has been maybe the best player on the Blues all season, um, depending on how you look at it. Um, but the Blues blew the first of, I believe, three different one-goal leads that they would blow this game. Uh, when Timo Meyer scored his sixth of the season, assisted from Eric Carlson, who's had a spectacular year, and LeBanc to make it 1-1. And then Jordan Cairo, who has really been turning it on these last few games, sort of been overshadowed by the losing streak, but he'd been playing a lot better hockey, and he finally got rewarded for it with his fourth goal of the season. And you could tell how much it, that meant to him. He knows that he's been struggling. He knows that he hasn't been getting that production that he was hoping for. Um, and there was a lot of relief in that goal for him there to put the blues up two to one. However, unfortunately the lead did not last long with Tomas hurdle, who seems to always score against the St. Louis blues got his third of the season, another assist for the bank and another one for Ferraro. So tie game there. Uh, Kyrie's goal was assisted by Bush and Thomas, by the way, finally a power play goal uh, for the blues an area that they'd really been struggling. They're still not perfect on the power play, still really struggling to get, um, consistent opportunities. You know, they're really missing that Perron one-timer that he provided um, last season. 
you know, it really feels like they have a lot of opportunities to one time the puck and they just don't have a guy there to finish it off, unfortunately. But still, we're able to get a power play goal from Jordan Cairo there to make it three to two or two to one. And then Hurdle ties it up. And then Brandon Sod gets his first goal of the year late in the period. Huge, huge, huge momentum goal there. Um, heading into the third period with a lead. And then this is where I got a little bit nervous. Logan Couture ties the game up just a minute and a half into the third. And I was like, all right, I've seen this one before. Um, Blues have had a couple leads throughout this losing streak, only to blow it early in the period and then go on to lose. So I was definitely a little nervous at that point. But who but Kale Rosen, everybody predicted that obviously, as the one to uh, score the game-winning goal for the Blues for the first time in nine games. Everyone thought it would be Kale Rosen. Um, Rosen just capitalizes on good puck movement. Um, Th Thomas, Robert Thomas, does a really good job to protect the puck and maintain possession before passing to Tarasenko, who slides it to Kale Rosen uh, for his first goal of the season off of a one-timer from the point. Uh, Thomas gets his second assist of the night which is great. You know, he's been, he's been pretty good this year. Definitely like to see more out of him, but seeing the numbers increase for him as well has been nice to see. Um, and then obviously Tarasenko and then Noel Achari eventually put the empty netter away uh, to seal the deal for the St. Louis blues. And man, it sounded like a playoff game in there uh, over the broadcast, even when they scored that tying goal or that, that not tying goal, but that clinching goal from Achari with 19 seconds left. Buchnevich gets himself his second assist of the night. He has continued to be really, really good, but um, yeah, at that point, it was pretty much guaranteed that the Blues would win the game, and they did. The losing streak is over. Now, like I said, it wasn't all great. There are still some things that, I, that are a little bit concerning, but in this upcoming second segment, I'm going to be breaking down the last kind of nine games as a whole. How can the Blues rebound? And then in the third segment, I'm going to be talking about the upcoming games against the Colorado Avalanche and Vegas Golden Knights. Not in that order. Not in that order, excuse me, because it's the reverse order. But anyways... I'll be getting into it, but before I do, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. Got it all for you at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts like this one, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. I'll be right back with the second half of today's episode. All right. So there's a little, little bit of concern from me um, following that game. And I want to talk about the bad first because we've had a lot of negative talk here on this podcast over the last few weeks with the Blues struggling as much as they have been. Um and I don't want to bog this podcast down, this episode specifically, with that because there are definitely some positives to talk about. However, I definitely think it is important to keep our expectations reasonable and acknowledge where the Blues are still struggling. You know, just because they got a win doesn't mean that they're a perfect team, doesn't mean they're going to go on and win the Stanley Cup. Um, and here's why the Blues struggled to beat the 3 and 11 San Jose Sharks. Um, they didn't look like the better team throughout and on paper, the blues should absolutely be the better team. Um, and you know, it, it looks like at a couple points that they could very well have lost that game. You know, they never, they never were trailing, which is good. Mm -hmm. Um, but they blew three separate one goal leads, which is concerning because a team like the San Jose Sharks doesn't have the attacking capability of, Vegas Golden Knights or Colorado Avalanche, but blowing three separate one goal leads usually means you lose the game. Usually means you've had multiple opportunities to take control um, of the game, take control of the momentum, and you just haven't up until that point. And that's sort of what happened. The Blues failed to take control throughout the entire game up until the second half of the third period, and it bit them in the butt. They allowed San Jose to, to hang around and to tie the game up multiple times. And that is only a um, only a, a recipe for success that's going to work uh, against teams like the San Jose Sharks. You know, you, you can't do that against the Colorado Avalanche or the, um, you know, Tampa Bay Lightning or the, these elite teams in the league. You, you, can't, you can't get away with stuff like that. 
Um, but fortunately, you know, in this in this scenario, it led to a win for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, one moment, I have to respond to a message. Apologies. All right, sorry about that. Um, anyways, so yeah, blowing three one goal leads never a recipe for success. Fortunately, in this game. Um, the Blues were still able to squeak out a win, and hopefully, you know, they can use that and say, okay, yeah, we won, but we blew three one-goal leads. Can't can't be complacent. Can't sit back and think playing that this playing this way is going to bring success the rest of the season. And I don't think they're going to be complacent. I think that they know they still have a lot of work to do. I mean, they lost eight straight. They're still um, last in the conference or last in the division. Um, long, long, long way to go. Uh, to get back into a playoff spot for the Blues. But fortunately for them, the rest of the Western Conference, not named the Vegas Golden Knights, do not have good records. Um, I'm pretty sure the second wildcard spot is occupied by the Arizona Coyotes, who is who are six, six, and one. So that's 13 points. The Blues have eight points. Like they're not, they're not far out of it yet. You know, they're very fortunate that the Western conference is off to a slow start and that they're not like 20 points out of a playoff spot right now. Cause they very well could have been, um, I mean, obviously 20 points is an exaggeration, but losing eight straight very easily could have put the blues in a spot where they pretty much had to be perfect the rest of the season. And they're not there. You know, there, there, there are a lot of teams that are also struggling in the Western conference, not nearly as much as the St. Louis blues, fortunately for them. Um, but still, they the door is open for the Blues to make a move rather quickly if they string together a couple wins in a row. Um, then things could be looking pretty decent, you know. Um, again, they didn't have to string a couple wins to in a row together and playing Colorado and Vegas in their next two games. I don't know why I keep reversing the order, but playing Vegas and then Colorado, I should say, in their next two games is going to make that about as challenging as it could for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, Vegas being the best team in the in the NHL, maybe record wise, I'm not sure. I know that was the case a few days ago. I haven't looked at the standings today, um, but Vegas is a really good team. They've only lost twice, I think. Um, Jack Eichel is a man on fire. He just lit up the Buffalo Sabers for a hat trick. He is feeling himself this year. Um, Petrangelo, obviously a really good player. They, they have definitely put the pieces together this year. They look like a really scary team. And then the Colorado Avalanche are off to an underwhelming start and what better way for them to get back on track. Um, um, what a better way for the Colorado Avalanche to get back on track than against the St. Louis Blues, a team that they beat in the playoffs. Um, so it's going to be tough for the Blues. So, you know, I'm going to talk about that in the third segment. I don't want to get into it now. I kind of want to talk about what they can take away from this losing streak as a whole and to sort of try to spin this into a positive. At least it happened at the beginning of the season because the Blues now have a frame of reference in terms of mental fortitude. You know, inevitably later on in the season when they lose two games in a row, even if they lose two games in a row, their next two games against Vegas and Colorado, whatever it may be, they have a frame of reference. They can look back and say, holy crap, this is bad, but it's not as bad as that time that we lost eight in a row in regulation and managed to climb out of that hole. Are they going to climb out of that hole? I hope so. But the fact that this slide happened so early in the season, it's the best time it could have happened. You know, you wouldn't want it to happen in the middle of the season during crunch time. They fall out of the playoff spot or at the end of the season, and then they head into the playoffs with a terrible losing streak or they've missed the playoffs because of it. If you're going to lose eight in a row in regulation, at least it's games four through 12 of the regular season um, or three through 12, three through nine or whatever the heck, no, four through 11, whatever. Um, at least it happened then, you know, silver lining. And then, like I said, there's that, that frame of reference that I think is really important that this team as a group can come together and say, that was maybe the hardest thing we've had to go through as a team ever, which might be, it might be a, the, the worst losing streak of a lot of those guys' careers um, on, on the blues, you know? So they can look back and say, okay, we were able to battle through this horrific stretch of hockey, the worst we've ever seen as professionals, um, and come together and win a game. Let's do that again. 
And then all of a sudden it builds. And all of a sudden this eight game losing streak turns into a sense of camaraderie and, and lighting a fire under, under them and, and turns them into a, you know, a juggernaut. We saw this in 2019 and that's not to say the blues going to go on to win a Stanley cup, but we've seen how losing hockey can motivate a team more than anything else ever can, you know, get them with a chip on their shoulder saying, okay, we know we're not this bad. We see the media, we see these, these, you know, gotcha tweets that Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl have as many goals as we do as a team. We see that. We know that people are sleeping on us. We know that people are doubting us. And now that the expectations are gone, now that everyone thinks we're going to be in the Connor Bedard race, um, we know, we know we are better than this. We know we can win. And hopefully the blues can tap into sort of that energy, you know, that 2019 energy and say, Hey, we've been here before we've been in a position where everyone expects us to be last in the league. Everyone expects us to crash and burn. And we know we can prove them wrong. Jordan Bennington knows he can prove them wrong. He continues to have a spectacular season. He made 27 saves against the sharks um, and made some big ones to keep them from taking the lead and keeping them, keeping the blues from blowing leads at other times. So overall, I think this could be a good thing in the sense that it could be a motivation factor um but you got to climb out of that hole you know you've put yourself in a pretty big hole you're four games below 500 still you have to climb out of that hole and you have to do it quickly um so fingers crossed and in this third and final segment i'm gonna be talking about how the blues can hopefully do exactly that in their upcoming games against the vegas golden knights and colorado avalanche so make sure you stay tuned All right, ladies and gentlemen, time for the third and final segment of today's episode. So, <laughs> you're Craig Ruby, whatever, you, you're celebrating after the win, and all of a sudden you glance at the schedule in the corner of the room, and you see, oh, great, next game we're playing Vegas? And then who are we playing after that? Colorado? Oh, dear. The Blues are going to have to have their A game over these next few days. Um and honestly, all things considered, I'm just going to say this off the top, best case scenario, I think they split. I think you would say that even if the Blues were on fire to start the year, playing what I think are the two best teams in the, in the conference, um, Vegas, just based on how they've played this year um, with all the wins that they've gotten in Colorado just because they just won the Stanley Cup. If you told me that they were playing the first, you know, the best two teams in the conference, <laughs> No matter what the Blues record was, I say, all right, I'd be happy with a split. Uh, obviously, you'd prefer to go two and zero, uh, and uh, you would hate to go zero and two. But there's a couple things that let's 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 walk through each scenario. How can the Blues go two and zero? The Blues can go two and zero by taking all the things that they did well in that San Jose game and tightening them up and improving on them even more. Basically, it's the buckling down when you have a lead that's the biggest thing is the blues had a lead and they kind of you kind of just go oh thank god we're winning and then they let up a goal and they're like oh shoot we, we still got to keep trying they they got to buckle down when they have a lead um you know put the foot on their throats score another goal um etc etc just 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 do as much as you can to, to double down um you know play confident play winning hockey Keep it simple. And that's something they did really well against San Jose. They kept it simple. The passes were crisp, but they weren't they weren't too many of them. Um the shots on goal were much better. They weren't they were missing nets a lot less, which is great. They missed so many nets in that losing streak, and they were still missing the net occasionally, but not nearly as much. Um, and the special teams was good. That's the biggest thing, honestly. I think if the special teams can play where it was in that San Jose game not only against Colorado and Vegas, but moving forward, the blues will have a lot of success this year because that was an area that was struggling immensely for them. Um, okay. Now how, what, what happens if they go into, let's flip the script. What happens if they go into, I'm not going to be sitting here waving the white flag because at the end of the day, you lose to Vegas. All right, fine. They're off to the best start in the NHL. You'll get them next time. And then you lose to Colorado. You're like, all right, they won the Stanley cup. They're a juggernaut, whatever. Not saying I'd be happy if the Blues went 0 and 2, but I don't think it is a sign of the Blues being a 4 and 10 team because they would be 4 and 10 at that point. Now, I think the eight game losing streak was a an absolute um, anomaly. Not going to happen again. The Blues are not eight games in a row bad. So you got to kind of separate that. You got to throw that away. 
And if the Blues go 0-2 in these next two games, it's not because they're a team that is destined to be in last place. The Blues went 0-2 because they played two incredible teams. I don't think they're going to go 0-2. I think they're a team that is going to be incredibly motivated coming off of a win and incredibly motivated to continue that, continue that trend and climb back into a playoff spot and prove to Doug Armstrong, like, hey, we are ready to compete. Don't trade us at the trade deadline. We want to run it back. We want to compete for a Stanley Cup this year. And I think they're going to be coming out playing with playoff intensity, especially against Colorado. Um, I pray Jordan Binnington gets the start against Colorado because I think he'll go out and pitch a shutout just because of his motivation um, based off of how the last season ended. But that being said, that is all the time I have for you guys today. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to me on. That way you never miss a new episode. You can follow Locked On Blues on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Blues. You can follow the show on YouTube at Locked On Blues. That way you can see my beautiful face. My cat sometimes makes an appearance. Sometimes I spill water on my shirt and you all can laugh at me. It's kind of dried up now, but you can still see it. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. Hope you all have a great weekend. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter at Josh Hammond NHL. I'm going to be in a change of scenery next week. I'm heading down to visit my girlfriend in Maryland, so I'm not going to have the same setup, but should still be able to get episodes up for you guys. So just a minor housekeeping uh, note there. That being said, thank you all so much for listening, like I said, and as always, let's go Blues.